there, this is Pop Culture Guy. Today, I thought I'd share my revised overall ratings of the 2016 films to the lowest rated to number one, and a small little review of each of them. At 24, Batman v Superman, Done of Justice, with 50%. Since half of the time, it was really awesome, it was really great. Half of the time, it really wasn't. It tries too hard to be like the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Instead of trying to do its own thing, it copies and copies. But there are positives. Number 23, X-Men Apocalypse at 57%. Although it's a nice addition to the franchise, it's very repetitive. Doing the same thing that the past films have done before, especially the ending involving both Magneto and Professor X. Although one of the greatest moments in the film, and one of the greatest moments for me in for film in 2016, was Quicksilver's mansion save. It was just better than the one in Days of Future Past. Number 22, Hail Caesar at 62%. A nice fun look at 50s cinema. The main problem is the fact that none of the characters are real or the movies they're making are real except for the character that Josh Brolin plays. It's funny, it's whimsical, but the plot twist, it's been done before, it's not that amazing. It's a fun film, just could have been a lot better. Number 21, Ghostbusters 2016 at 65%. The film is okay, it's not as great as the first two films, but it does some unique things, the way they fight ghosts, the way they capture them. And I thought the characters were, were great. The problem is that sometimes the comedy just goes too long. There are comedic moments where it just keeps going and going and it should have stopped long before. I, I think people are a bit too harsh on it, but at the same time, yeah, there are problems. Number 20, the BFG, 65%. Spielberg really delivers in this adaptation of a Roald Dahl book. It has great effects, wonderful acting, the story is nice, though it's very slow and it can drag on. Number 19, Kung Fu Panda 3 with 66%. Now, I love the Kung Fu Panda films. And I thought this is a great addition. The problem is, it feels too kiddish compared to the other two. It tries too hard to appeal to kids sometimes, and there are moments that could have been avoided through simple conversations. And it's very obvious. There are well done fight sequences, the animation is top notch, the voice acting is great. Number 18, Jason Bourne at 68%. Now, I liked The Bourne Legacy. I didn't mind it. I didn't have Jason Bourne. But I think this film is not as great as that one. I think this is maybe the weakest of the franchise. And I've seen all of them. Because it's very repetitive. It does what the film did before. And it adds to Jason Bourne's a history. And Damon excels in the role once again. It's just the action is done the same way as before, and it's, it's just okay. Number 17, Suicide Squad, 69%. This film has some improvement over Donut Justice. However, you can tell where some of the reshoots are. How one moment it's very grim, another moment it's just all of a sudden comical. It tries too hard to be like Guardians of the Galaxy, it has way too much music going from one scene to another. I think they truly deserve their best makeup Oscar. Due to the use of Killer Croc instead of King Shark, which would have meant using CGI. People shouldn't really be angry. Number 16, 13 Hours and Secret Soldiers of Benghazi at 79%. I think this is one of Michael Bay's most serious films. It doesn't rely on toilet humor or have huge plot holes. It's based on true events 
I think this is one of the best films, especially since, unlike Pearl Harbor, there's not a lot of studio interference. The action is great, though with the editing it can be confusing when certain things happen. Number 15, The Nice Guys at 80%. I thought this was a well-made comedic neo-noir thriller. It's directed very well. It's a basically a period piece, 70s, 80s. Russell Crowe and Ryan Gosling have great chemistry. It was really fun, though at times very slow. And I'm surprised it didn't even get any Oscar nominations. That's just crazy. Number 14, The Shallows at 82%. I think this is a great horror film, and Blake Lively does an amazing performance. It can drag at times, but it's a very visceral film. Number 13, Independence Day Resurgence at 84%. I actually enjoyed this film. I thought the action was incredible. The effects were great. The acting was okay. I really enjoyed it, unlike many other people. I found it compelling. Number 12, Fantastic Beast and Where to Find Them at 86%. This is a great film that is on par with the rest of the Harry Potter franchise. It does a lot of world building, the chemistry between the four main characters. It's just as great as the one between Harry, Ron, and Hermione. It's not without its problems. It's just the plot being very basic. Number 11, Star Trek Beyond at 89%. One of the best of the Star Trek films. However, for one that celebrates 50 years, there's not a lot of like huge references. There are like small ones, but not what, what would you expect from a 50th anniversary film. The writing is great by Simon Pegg. The acting is incredible. The effects are top notch as always, though it's repetitive in how much the Enterprise once again gets destroyed over and over. Number 10, Sausage Party at 89%. I actually thought this would get nominated for Best Animated Film. It didn't, but it's a really funny film. You would never expect this just by looking at maybe a picture or a screenshot or a small clip that it's a hard R, raunchy fest. Number 9, Arrival at 90%. The only film that I saw that was nominated for Best Picture. Even though there was probably no chance of it winning, it was a really mesmerizing film. Number 8, Finding Dory at 90%. A great sequel to the original film. This film is very gut-punching. It's very emotional. It's fun. It has great voice talents. Although there are a few kiddish moments that take away from how great it is. But even then... This film is a great addition for Pixar. Number 7, Captain America Civil War at 95%. A very fun film and will no doubt have a huge impact on the MCU moving forward. Number 6, Deadpool at 98%. You know it's good when it's the very first superhero film to be nominated for Best Picture at the Golden Globes. It's for comedy, but that's because it is a comedy. It's a black comedy with everyone's favorite Merc with a Mouth. And it is one of the most well-made films this year. Number five, Sully at 98%. I mean, I thought this film would get nominated for sure at the Oscars for like Best Picture or for Best Actor. Since, you know, it's Tom Hanks and Clint Eastwood. How could it not be? I mean, it's surprising that it didn't. And it's still... One of the best films of 2016. Number 4, Doctor Strange at 98%. One of the best origin stories ever told. Great casting, amazing effects, and shows that the MCU has no signs of slowing down. Number 3, Zootopia. The winner of the best animated film. It rightfully deserves so. Why? Because it has a very surprising message. One you wouldn't expect from an animated film, but it works, and it is very important in today's climate. 
Number two, Moana at 100%. The other film I thought would win Best Animated Film. And Best Song as well. But never happened. Either way, an amazing film. And one of these things best. And number one, Rogue One, a Star Wars story at 100%. The darkest of the franchise by far. Although it has a very slow beginning, it gets real good as it moves on. The final fight scene is just, there are no words to describe it. It's just an amazing film. It shows how well you can mix science fiction and war. I will no doubt live on as a classic. Thank you for letting me share my revised overall ratings for the films of 2016 that I've seen. Now there's something else I want to talk about and it's very important and might take a bit to go over but basically 